over how to complete the first problem on your combined law worksheet. If you've lost a copy of this worksheet, when you click on combined law worksheet one through nine, the assignment title in the materials section of your Schoology class, you'll see that number one links you right there to the combined law worksheet. Um, you don't have to print out a copy of it yourself if you just write your answers on your page of notebook paper or a piece of copy paper you can turn in your set of solutions and I can grade that. If you're working from home you can always just write your solutions to each problem on your notebook paper or a piece of copy paper and then take a photo of that using your phone or your Chromebook and you can post those photos to this Schoology link. Um, you can upload them here. Let's get to it. Um, your worksheet looks like this. Now there's not a name line at the top, so you want to make sure that you write your name at the top. Fill in your name. And then at the top of every math worksheet, we write the formula P1B1 over T1 equals P2V2 over T2. I just want to remind you the order of P1 and V1 does not matter. This time that I wrote it, I wrote P1 and then V1. Because they are multiplying, you could have written V1, P1. Sometimes when I write it, I'll put V1 first. Sometimes when I write it, I put P1 first. It's just personal preference. If you're adding or multiplying, the order of the numbers does not matter. Now because we have temperatures involved, we're also going to need degree C plus 273 equals K. I like to box or underline or maybe highlight my K for Kelvin to remind myself that it has to be Kelvin if you want to put it into the formula. When we're talking about the combined gas law, we are combining Boyle's law, Charles law, and there's a third guy that I didn't teach you, but it also includes his formula as well. So P1V1 equals P2V2. That was Boyle's law. V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. That was Charles's law. And this is putting everything together. Um, the one that we skipped was P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. And you can see that that is included in that as well. Let's go over all of the units we would expect. So this is the last thing I like to write at the top of all of my math worksheets. If there are units of measurement, I like to write them out. So for volume, we would expect milliliters or liters. For pressure, we would expect ATMs for atmospheres or KPAs for kilopascals. Remember Pascal and pressure both start with P. That's how I like to remind students uh, to remember it. And volume has an L in it, volume. And milliliters and liters have a capital L. The last variable we have is temperature, and that will either be given to you in degrees Celsius or Kelvin. And again, I'm gonna box my K to remind myself that it has to be in Kelvin to be able to do the math. So in this video, we are just going to go over the solution to number one. What I like to do always with word problems is embrace the story. So we are going to look at this word problem like it's a story. I'm going to read it for the plot line first. So when I do that first read through, I ignore all of the words that have to do with the numbers so that I get an idea of what is going on. If I initially have a gas at this pressure and volume and temperature, and then I raise the pressure and increase the temperature, what is the new volume of the gas? Now I stop and I ask myself, can I summarize this in my own words 
and actually state what's happening. If I can't tell myself what just happened in those two sentences, then I need to go back and reread that problem again. If I initially have a gas, and then I raise the pressure and increase the temperature, what is the new volume of the gas? So I have a gas, then I'm going to raise the pressure and the temperature. So now I'm going to go through and label all of my numbers. Are they a V, P, or T based on the units? Sometimes they'll say things like the pressure of, but when they don't say that, we need to be able to figure out if it's a volume, pressure, or temperature just by using the units. So I'm looking at ATMs, and ATMs is a pressure unit, so I'm going to label this a P. We have 23 liters. Liters is a volume unit, so I'm going to label this a V. And 200 K, which is a temperature unit, so I'm going to mark this as a T. Then I raise it to 14 ATMs. ATMs was a P. And increase the temperature to to kelvins, again kelvins is a T, and then says what is the new volume, which would be a V. Now I need to go through and select if it's the one that happened first in the story or the one that happened second in the story. And by that I don't mean what number was the first number in the first sentence. When I say what happened first and what happened second, I'm talking about chronologically in this story, what are the things that occurred first in the storyline versus the things that occurred last in the storyline. So if we're looking at I initially have a gas, that word initially is one of my favorite words for them to use because initials in your name are the first letters of your name. So if you initially have a gas at this pressure, then that is the first pressure. It's what you're starting with, just like your name starts with your initials. So you initially have it, which means it's the first one. Now, if the gas has this pressure and this volume and this temperature all at the same time, and those are the initial ones, then they are all the number ones. They are all the first items that happened in the story. Now, the next words should confirm what we already know, that these were the things that happened first, and now we're going to switch into the things that happened second. So let's take a look at those words. Let's see how green does. And then I raise the pressure. And then is something that did not happen before, it's about to happen, or it happened next. And then I raise the pressure to, that must be the thing that I'm landing on. That's the part that I'm ending on. So that's my P2. And I increase the temperature to, so that's got to be my second temperature. It started at something else. Now I've increased it to this. And then finally, they gave us another big giveaway word when they said, what is the new volume? When you have new, now, Whatever you had before became old, and this is the new. So this has to be the second item. It has to be the number two item. So now that we've marked it in our problem, we can go ahead and write out all our variables down the side. So we've got our P1 equals, V1 equals, T1 equals, P2 equals, V2 equals and T2 equals. For my P1 equals, we said it was 12 ATMs. For my volume one, we picked 23 liters. I want you to notice that I'm leaving the units on as I'm writing these in. Temperature for the first one, it started at 200 K. Then we went on to 14 ATMs, atmospheres, 300K for temperature number two. And what is the new volume? I like to put a question mark for the thing that I'm looking for. 
if you don't like to do that, if you prefer to put an X for the thing that you're looking for, you can put an X there. Also talking about preference, if you like to use uh, for your variables, all of your P's together, your V's together, and then your T's, you can write them in that order too. You don't have to copy it exactly the same as me. So some students will say P1, P2, V1, V2, T1, T2. As long as your setup is helping you get the answers right, do you. All right, so the next thing that I do is write out my formula. I know it's at the top, but we're gonna write it out here again, and as we practice writing it, it really helps it stick in our minds, and it really helps us as we work through rearranging it each time. So all I did was copy the formula. Remember that we are looking for V2. I'm gonna circle V2 because that's the thing that I want to be alone on one side of the equation, and then we're going to move P2 and T2 over to the other side. Why are we doing that? We don't know a number for V2. We do have a number for all the other items. When we do the math of this problem, we need all of our numbers to be together and the thing that we don't know alone on the other side of the equal sign. For some students, they will go ahead and plug it into the formula first and then start moving them around. If that's your preference and you're able to get your answers correctly, then do that. But this is what works best for me and um, for some students this also works best for them. So we want V2, the thing we don't know, to be alone. And right now it's multiplying P2 and it's dividing by T2. When we want to move variables over to the other side of the equal sign in math, we have to do the opposite math function. So in this case, we are multiplying P2. The opposite math of multiply is to divide. When we divide, P2 is going to end up underneath the fraction bar. And if you do it on one side of the equal sign, you have to mirror that or do the same thing on the other side. So we had to divide by P2, and that means we're gonna divide by P2 on this side. Your P2s will cancel. T2 is on the bottom. It's the only one left that we need to move over. So when they are dividing by T2, we need to do the opposite to move T2 to the other side. So we will do the opposite of divide by T2, which would be multiply by T2. T2 is dividing when it's on the bottom, multiplying would be on the top. So if we have to do the opposite of divide, that puts T2 on top. And if you do it to this side of the equation, you must do the same thing on the opposite side. So we would put T2 and your T2 over T2 cancels. Now it says T2 times P1 times V1 all over P2 times T1. If you are getting comfortable with doing that, something that you might notice is that originally we had P2 on top, T2 on bottom, and they both needed to move to the other side. When we moved them and did the opposite math, it used to say P2 over T2. When we do opposite math, that fraction flips to the opposite parts of the fraction. So P2 is now under T2. We started P2 over T2. Now it's under T2 because we flipped it when we had to do the opposite math to get it to the other side. If that sounds too complicated or scary for you, you just need more practice, do it the algebra way. P2 is on top, multiplying, so you're gonna do the opposite, which is divide. If you divide on this side, you divide on that side. The more you practice that, the better you will get. Let's move on. So I'm going to rewrite the formula so it's nice and neat. Now it says V2 equals, because V2 is the only thing left here, V2 equals, T2 
times P1 times V1 all over P2 times T1. Now you're ready to plug in your numbers. You've got your T2, which is 300 Kelvin times your P1. Again, it doesn't matter what order they're in. So you could have your 12 ATMs times your 23 liters and then times your 300 Kelvin. On the bottom we need P2 times T1, so I'm going to have 14 ATM times my T1, 200K. The next place where students have made some mistakes is when you type this into your calculator. You really need to know your calculator well, so make sure that you are practicing with your calculator before the quiz and before the test. While you're doing these worksheets, please do not use your Chromebook tab or your phone as a calculator because when you have to use a physical handheld calculator, something like this, if you don't have practice with your calculator, you're not going to know, do I need parentheses for this? Can I just type divided by and then times and will it come out right? The quiz or the test is not the moment to ask those questions. The practice work is when you need to figure out how does this go into my calculator. So the way that I like to type it in is I'll do 300 times 12 times 23 equals and then I'll hit divided by. So now I know that the whole top number I hit divided by so it takes my answer and divides it by and then I do open parentheses then I'll type 14 times 200 and then do my closed parentheses because I put the bottom 14 times 200 in parentheses, it will be sure to multiply that first before it divides that number under what I had from the top. As long as you're getting the answer correct by the way that you're typing it in, there are many ways to type this in and get it correct. But again, those are things that you have to practice when you're in class um, or when you're doing your worksheet so you know that you get them right. So when you type all these things in, you're going to get 1,000,000. Um, I'm typing them in right now. 29.57. Now, we aren't done yet because we still need to know what units are left on our number. We have Kelvin on top and Kelvin on bottom. So that's going to end up canceling out. We have ATMs on bottom and ATMs on top. So those units cancel out too and the units we're left with are liters. You should always be left with one unit on top that didn't cancel and when I go to write this answer down, I want to make sure, is liters reasonable for what I was trying to solve for? So liters, again, is a volume unit. Was I looking for a volume? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and box my answer. And you can circle your answer. Um, I don't like it when students write the answer back in over here in their variables because when I'm trying to help them troubleshoot, it looks like they thought they knew the number for everything and they didn't know what they were solving for. It's also really hard for me to find your answer if you're writing it in with all the other numbers. I need you to box or circle your answer. It needs to be apparent in some way. So please write your answer out to the side. As you get more confident with these, you'll be able to see that that fraction ends up flipping when you switch it over to the other side. As you get confident with these, you're going to be able to see those units canceling out much easier. You're going to notice things like initial, original, old, previous that tell you the thing happened first. 
you're going to notice them saying new or final or resulting for the thing that's happening second. And those things will become more and more uh, familiar and obvious as you're reading. One last thing before we finish. The answer to the next problem is 30.5. Go ahead, try to do the next problem and see if you get 30.5. If you're one of my students who likes to see if you can get something first before I give you hints, I have a hint for number four, so you would pause the video now and if you need a hint for number four, you can come back. But when you get to number four, it says the pressure did not change. If the pressure does not change, the pressure is not changed. If the pressure doesn't change, you're going to have the same number on top and bottom of your fraction for both pressures. You don't have to make up your own number for that if you don't want to because it'll end up canceling itself out no matter what you put. If you would like to put a number in there for pressure, just use normal room pressure, which would be 1.0 ATM. And if it doesn't change, then your P2 would be 1.0 ATM as well. Remember, do your best, write out all your work, and then ask any questions that you need. Um, for this problem, it was really great because they left our temperatures in Kelvin. We didn't have to add 273 because there was no Celsius.